Welcome to the Wine Zone. I'm Conrad Edgebeck. My guest today on Pro and Con is Norm Hardy. Norm, you're a pioneer in uh, pioneer winemaker in Prince Edward County. It's Canada's newest officially recognized wine region. Um, so it's not really a region that has a lot of history, and yet the latest issue of Wine Spectator has you as a number one wine of the year by Matt Kramer. Number one wine of the year. That's uh, how do you get that after in a region that's like less than ten years old? Well, I I think um, one of the great things is is that we have a fantastic starting point, and that is we have these amazing soils and amazing climate, and the foundation of great wine starts with great soils and great climate. Soils are the starting point. Climate is a secondary point, but uh, without the two, you don't have anything. And, and um, I was fortunate enough to find Prince Edward County 10 years ago. And um, um, sometimes you hit it out of the park. But um, I, um, I, I'm a firm believer uh, that both the county and Niagara can produce world-class wines. And we haven't, you know, we, we've, we've had tremendous support from yourself and David Lawrence and local journalists. And yeah, but how did you feel when you, did somebody called you? Did somebody well, call you? Who yeah, called you. Well, it was, it was really funny. Um, uh, this came out in the states about four or five days earlier than in Canada. Right. And I started getting these emails from people in the states wanting to buy our wines, and read about the Wine Spectator, and was there, and I was going, "Oh, well, this is great." And uh, the reality is, is we found out on Saturday night, you know, three Saturdays ago. Um, and we were working in the cellar, and it actually didn't change anything because we had a lot to do, and we kept going until 3 in the morning, and then we had a little bit of a celebration afterwards. Now listen to what he says, if I can find him. He says, right, show it to me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the yeah, racy, racy acidity, incredible complexity and depth. Wow. I, you know, You're a champion, Norm of Prince Edward County, of terroir, and yet you blend the Niagara juice with, with, with some of your wines. You want to talk about that? Yeah, I, I really believe um, the foundation soils in both Prince Edward County and Niagara are phenomenal. Um, the, the county are uh, more limestone based with, with some clay, and that gives us a wonderful delicacy, femininity, very sort of coat to bone style. And in best case scenario, really, really good moussini, which should really be in the Cote de Bonne, but isn't. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, for our Pinots from Niagara, um, less limestone, uh, but wonderfully rich clays uh, in, interspersed with some, some, some light limestone. And that gives Pinots a bigger and richer and more voluminous. Uh, more body. Yeah, body. More body. More body. More, more, body, texture. more texture. Um, and um, we bottle them very separately, but in the very best years, um, uh, a blend of the two appellations, we can, the, the plus plus the plus, the sum of the parts are greater than the individuals. And we don't do that every year. Right, I um, But it's also a real plus in, in, in working with both regions because I have this opportunity to do so. Right, and, and, and you've worked all over the world. You've worked in, in Otago, you've worked in Oregon, you worked in California, you worked in South Africa, your homeland. You worked in Burgundy, and yet all the all the expressions that you use relate to music. Yeah, this is bone like, etc. So, who who's your major influence in winemaking? Number one, name names. Well, I would say in white wines, um, uh, there are definitely two. Um, there is um, uh, from Saint Aubin, uh, uh Olivier Lamy um, is. Um, I think an absolute god. Saint Aubin is really um, seen as a, as as Puny and Chasson's sort of second cousin, um, and his his Saint Aubin's taste better than ninety nine uh, percent of of the uh, of the of the of the Puny's I've tasted, um, and I've learned a tremendous amount from him. And then there's a guy in in Merceau, uh, Thierry Matro. And Thierry Matteau, M-A-T-R-O-T, 
and uh, he does Merso and he does Saint Romain, he does Ri. And I went with Nicholas Pacell in '97. We were I was doing vintage for Nicholas and his dad at Pustor. And we had a little break on the Saturday afternoon and we whipped down to Thierry Metro. And Thierry gave us all the time in the world. And I didn't know a hell of a lot about winemaking in those days. It was the first vintage in Burgundy. And he gave us an hour and a half, two hours. And what I learned from Thierry Metro um, about oxidative, um, old world white winemaking um, really has carried through in my whites. And then in the reds, um, I've had tremendous teachers. Um, Nicholas Patel and his dad Gerard were huge influences. Pascal Marchand uh, has a been Canadian. A Canadian. He's working well. with another Canadian. Yeah, more in Tals, Tals, more Tals. Tals, um, uh, have, have been huge influences. And then um, I, I guess I owe uh, uh, the majority of it back to Nicholas because all the vintages when I worked for him, for his dad and for uh, uh, and uh, for, him, for Nicholas himself, He's always made an effort in the middle of vintage to whip me out and go and taste here and taste there. And whenever I visit him, you know, the doors open in houses that, that don't open. Right. And um, the, the Burgundian winemakers have been phenomenal in, exper in, in helping, you know, right. get me some insight. I wonder, I wonder if the doors would be as open now to the buying of your wines. I'm curious, now that, now that you've got this... Well, it's not now that you've got this from one spectator because you've been lauded by Jancis Robinson and other world names in wine. So, Mike, I'm curious now, how much are you exporting right now? Um, we're what percent? we're what looking volume? at about 20% right now. 20%? And to what countries? Um, well, UK, I, I, I look at export because Canada, you know, because of our provincial laws. No, I understand that. So I understand why. Quebec, to, so Quebec and Calgary are, 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 Quebec and Alberta are very, very good markets. Okay, but what about outside uh, of Canada? Uh, Hong Kong. Hong Kong? Japan, Japan has been a phenomenal market. Right. Um, and then... Uh, New York City and, and Connecticut. Yeah, the reason I'm asking you this is because I'm, I'm expecting that now that, that, that these accolades have come in, there's going to be huge demand on your wines outside of the country. I, I, we've seen it, and there's no yeah. question. Like, we've uh, just got our third order in a year from Japan. Fantastic. And it, what's so exciting about that, where Hong Kong is Bordeaux's biggest market, or, or was, or was, was recently. Recently. <laughs> but now they're looking at, at, at Burgundy and Pinot Noir. They are, they're getting there, but Japan has always been Burgundy's biggest export market. Mm -hmm. And if we can sell our Pinot Noirs and Chardonnays in Tokyo in the most competitive market in the world for that style of wine and we're getting reorders, yeah. then we're doing something. Then right. you're, doing abs you're absolutely doing something. Um, these days, you got into winemaking because you love the earth. You love making wine. Are you spending uh, more time in the vineyard, more time in the winery, or more time in the car running around selling the stuff? <laughs> um, I've, I've got a really, I spend the majority of my time in the vineyard. Um, yeah. I, I do 70,000 kilometers a year between Niagara and oh. Prince Edward County. 70,000. That's, uh, that's took me four years to put that on my card. That's, yeah, that's 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 <laughs> thirty-two French work, work weeks. I've worked that for. Um, for me, the vineyard is is the most important point. This is your starting point. If you get that right, um, and I'm beginning to sound like a broken record, but we actually do this. Is I'm in every single vineyard that we grow, that that we source grapes from, from growers, at least once a week, um, and uh, so I spend the majority of my summer doing that. Uh, then the whole of vintage is um, spent um, uh, making wine, um, and then the winter time is is marketing and sales. Um, our barrel chamber goes down to five degrees. The wines are very stable. Not a lot is happening over the winter, um, so I go in two days a week, uh, normally a Monday and a Friday, double check everything, and it's purely to put me at ease. There's very rarely any uh, that. It, the wines are moving so slowly at this stage. Yeah. Um, so the winters are, winters are marketing and sales. Well, it's three days from Christmas, which is why we have our set all decorated <laughs> in Christmas decorations. Um, are you shutting down? Are you no. shutting down? How are you spending Christmas? Um, I spend Christmas with my family, and then um, very interestingly, I, I like the time between Christmas and the year to actually go up to the winery and taste through all the tanks, taste through all the barrels, Quiet. And it's you're quiet. The I'm the only one there, and I can, um, 
you know, I can do 30 barrels a day, not be pressed. You can hear things that you can't hear when there's noise around. Exactly. And yeah, there's no distractions. And I, I really, I cherish those times because um, it really, uh, the wines of have, Heaven Star and Mallow, they've just gone into the shutdown phase. And you can create a really great mental plan on where are we going to go for the next year. Fantastic. Well, listen, I wish you a really Merry Christmas, Happy Season. And I got another first for you. Okay. We're doing first today, so, All right. so um, just, just a little offside here. Everybody's always looking for Christmas gifts. This is one that I got from my friend Rita a couple of years ago. It's just a little note, uh, book to take notes on, but it has a lovely, lovely wine theme. And I'm going to turn this into my wine zone guest book. Oh, fantastic. And you get to be the first one to sign in. Okay, so we'll do that right after the okay. show. Uh, in the meantime, I just say thanks um, and bye. We'll we'll talk again soon. Pleasure to be here, and thanks for having me. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. So I'll take.